2017, 6 p.m. All commissioners are present. There are no non-agenda public comments. No minutes to approve. Um, I don't believe any new business. And uh, no public hearing tonight. And with that, we'll just go ahead and jump into the study session, which is a continuation and continued review of the housing strategy update for the city of Bothell. And we're joined by um, community development, um, Tom Burdett, David Boyd, and also by Regional Coalition of Housing, Arch, Arthur Sullivan, and Mike Stanger. And with that, I'll go ahead and hand it over to either Dave or Arthur. Um, well, uh, I'm going to uh, I'm going to kind of manage the uh, the presentation mode. We don't really have a, a PowerPoint, but uh, we're going to walk through the uh, the matrix tonight, and uh, and I'll let uh, Arthur uh, conduct that uh, that walk with us. So in your pack, I wanted to quickly go over what's in the packet and what we're hoping to accomplish tonight. Um, so, and also remind you that in, in the first page of the staff memo, sort of the refresher, we added some language in about what the housing strategy is. Um, and its purpose is to create a range of potential strategies to help the city identify, analyze, and prioritize. Um, specific strategies that should be considered in the future by the city over the next few years. Um, and it also says it will advance the housing goals and objectives of the comprehensive plan by essentially establishing a work program or agenda for the next three to five years. So we're not necessarily trying to get to what is the answer on those things that you think are most important, but rather what are the most important things for the city to look into that will be most effective in advancing its goals and policies. Um, the process that we're going to see if it works here today um, is we want to sort of do a relatively quick, you know, we went through the strategy at the last meeting and everybody sort of got to ask clarifying questions and things like that. So we've walked through it. Now we want to sort of do like an initial sorting, just sort of see from hopefully we can get through this tonight, what are some of your initial reactions in terms of all the background materials that we've provided you and the conversations you've had about data, you know, the data needs, um, some of the, the panel that we had in here last time. We've now brought you information from the focus groups. Um, we developed sort of an objective uh, a couple meetings ago. And sort of with all that in mind, asking you to sort of do that initial sorting. And this isn't meant, this doesn't have to be the final sorting. Who knows in the end it might be. But it's try to get your initial reaction because I think it will help all of you as you try to hone in on what are the highest priorities and what are more medium priorities by seeing, you know, I think from doing this relatively quickly, maybe there's areas that there's, you see really strong consensus, that all of you pick some of the certain strategies. So that sort of tells us something right off the bat. Or you may see that there's others, others that don't get quite as much, and maybe those are the ones that need more talking through and things like that. Um, and so that's what we want to try to do today. And in order to do that, we... Um, what we're hoping to do, you have the, the matrix, um, the more completed matrix now. And what we're hoping is it's divided into four main sections. And for each section, we just first want to see if you have any clarifying type questions. See if from looking at the list there, there's any other strategies that you want to say, up on something like this is not on the list for this section. Um, and then one of the other things that um, as we move forward, and maybe we won't get as far on this part tonight as we might in the next two meetings, is we did give you a separate matrix, attachment two to your packet, which is a monitoring list, and which is divided into three sections. General monitoring, um, monitoring of activities of previous efforts, and monitoring activities of potentially emerging issues. So... We've already filled in, because you did this the last time you did the housing strategy, you did create this section on monitoring. And so you can see the ones that were sort of picked as saying, these are things that are generally things that we may need to monitor to understand our housing market as we move forward. But what you may find is that um, there may be some strategies, and I'm going to give you an example that Kenmore came up with, of um, the third one, like potentially emerging issues. So one of that is um, engineered wood. <coughs> And, and if you use engineered wood, you might be able to go higher. You can maybe do higher heights and, and stuff. And Kenmore said, boy, that's a really technical, complex issue, and no one's doing it yet. 
So why don't we sort of say we want to monitor that one, and if someone like Seattle or Bellevue, a bigger city with more resources, pick up on it, we want to know what they're doing. But that's our solution for dealing with that issue. So it's a strategy that's sort of in back of mind, but we're not putting it out there where the city is the lead. Or another one might be previous efforts. So there, a good example for you is we, you worked on updating the ADU ordinance just last year, right? Okay. Was that uh, last year? Three years ago now. Three years ago, three time flies, we're having fun. So that might be an area where, you know, where, well, we just did that. So we care about it a lot, but let's sort of watch it rather, you know, rather than revisit it in great length now, because we just updated that recently. So you might say, let's move that particular strategy over into this section of the monitoring. So that's another thing to keep in mind as you're looking at some of these strategies is to say, well, maybe it's not a lead strategy for us, but we still, let's keep an eye on it for one reason or another. Let's, um, let's sort of keep monitoring it. So that's one of the choices. And then the idea is that for each one of these section areas, we're going to ask you to just sort of quickly sort of respond which ones that you like uh, or you, you think are worthy of, the, of, of more consideration as potential priorities. And we're just going to ask you to vote on that. And you'll, when we get to the voting, You'll be able to vote um, a little more fine-tuned if you like. In other words, if you look at the first section, um, neighborhood vitality, there's A1, uh, which is sub-area plans, or, or actually I'm going to use A2, community design standards. And then under community design standards, there's four examples. And so when you vote, you might say, I like all of A2. I just like A2 in general. Or you might say, I like A2, but I really like the second and third bullets. So when you write your responses, you can either say A2 or A2, second and third bullets. Um, and so you'll have that choice of doing that. Okay? If you think it's, you only like it if it's certain elements of it or certain elements are most important. So that's what we hope to do with each section. To help remind you and to re and then when we're done with that we'll then have like we don't know how many we'll have how many we'll sort through there but we'll have like 15 or more when you add them up for the three, four sections how many that seem to have enough votes that seem to be filtering up then we might ask you to do it at the very end of the meeting and say take that big list and of those which seem to be most of that list which seems most promising now the idea of doing all that is just to sort of set a framework that will maybe help you to really hash through more detail at the next two meetings to sort of really see if you want to refine it or not or move things in or move things out. But we think there's a good way to have a lot of conversation and to start putting out perspectives on what is good or most relevant to this city. And again, think of it tonight as this isn't your final voting. This is meant to be an initial sorting. It may, in the end, look very much like what you have in the end, but I'm not sure if that will be the case or not. So that's sort of the objective for tonight. We did include in your packet a number of items, and most of these are things that you visited in the past, mostly just so that you have it in front of you. So as you're going through this, we can refer to it or you can refer to it. Um, so the first attachment two I've already talked about, which is the monitoring. Attachment three, which actually doesn't have, um, is a summary of the housing elements and goals um, that we gave you back in February. So it's just a quick synopsis of what all the primary housing element and goals and policies are. Attachment four is a summary of, this was taken from the last um, housing needs assessment. And it lists the kind of things the city worked on over the last few years. And we did add um, in attachment four, if you look under neighborhood vitality and housing supply and choice and housing affordability, you'll see there's a bullet called current efforts under each of those. Those are things that we added <coughs> since February. And it was based on sitting down with staff and then talking through some more current initiatives that have been going on in the last couple of years. So for example, under neighborhood vitality, um, you have the safe streets and sidewalks levy, which was just passed last fall um, in the city. So we've tried to add in those that are in there. So I don't know if you have questions. Some of these you're already working on and you're familiar with. Some of them you may not be. And re one main reason for putting these in here is that may affect timeliness, right? If you're working on something or it's on your radar that you're working on it, 
it may make you say, hey, that's related to one of the strategies, so maybe we need to prioritize that because it's something that's on there. For example, you were just talking about Canyon Park, you know, and if there's a housing component related to Canyon Park, then does that mean that makes it apropos that that's one reason why you wouldn't prioritize it, which we find in many cities often helps in that in the priority sorting. Then you have uh, the other thing we did is in February, we did a thing called the housing gaps, and that was where we tried to sort of take some of the data and highlight where you identified gaps in terms of household needs and types of housing and some area, and then you also have some comments on being bold and some areas you might be bold. So this was something you put together um, back in the February meeting as well. Then what we did is we tried to throw together a really high level summary from all of the community input we've gotten to date. So the first um, is from the panel meeting, last your last commission meeting on this topic. And then we split that into two sort of main sections, those from the nonprofit and the housing authority, um, members of the panels, and those from the market developers, um, <coughs> the more private market members of the development uh, group. Then we also added some summary notes from the three, I think there's three focus groups that we had by that time. Um, we haven't, we didn't have time to add the senior one, which was just yesterday. So those give you some of the, and, and these are the highlights that we thought related to strategies. Okay, so they're comments that we think relate back to strategy, and you'll see in a minute how we pull that into the uh, matrix for you, or try to pull that into the matrix. And then finally, we added the more detailed notes from each of those focus groups behind those, um, and also the notes from the panel meeting. So, so we're trying to give you sort of the range of materials that you've been covering and the summaries from those over the last few meetings as a resource for you, okay? Any questions on the overall? And are we ready to jump into the matrix? Okay. So uh, when you jump into the matrix, that's a good opportunity for the commissioners to be able to say, uh, what about here's one that we may want to yes. put in, or where's the splinter? Right. Okay. So we want to do that section by section. So yeah. the last thing I'm going to do, you know, we want to answer, also answer clarifying questions. So in the matrix, this is the legal size document, and does everybody have a printout version of that that's easy for them to read from because we have experts, right? Um, so everyone have a nice, this is probably legal size is the best format for reviewing that. So for that document, we now, these columns that you see along the top, um, at the last meeting we had the strategies and examples. I don't think we've made any significant changes from what we were using at the last meeting. Um, we've shown you, we have columns for is what um, element of the comprehensive plan or what policy it relates to. We then say if it's a regulatory or a direct support or, um, um, or if it's other types of support. Then we get into what types of households that strategy may focus on in terms of needs. So we have household types, which you identified in your gap areas. We have affordability levels. Um, and then we have other criteria. And that's where we put down, and their impact, it means we think it's an area where you might have a relatively large impact. Timeliness is if it feels like it might tie into some of the work program elements that are already out there, or there might be a community condition that's timely, that if you don't act, something could happen that might have like mobile home preservation. So is there a potential timeliness to the issue, either because it's already on the radar of the work program in the city or something related to it, or there might be something market condition-wise. Then the public input is where we took basically that summary that we just told you and we attempted to sort of shade where those comments link to a strategy. And then we tried to use words to say whose comment was it that led us to shade in that column. So you see on the very first one it says market. So it would have been from one of the market developers on your panel. Um, the other initials we used on this as you go through it were um, Faith community, faith is from the faith task force or focus group. Agency is from the, um, we met with human service agencies. Um, then we also have HA, which was housing authority, so they were part of the panel. Then we did, uh, there should be one other, which I think is non-profit, NP, which would be non-profit. 
Uh, so that would have come from the panel, from the nonprofit, and, and then we had chamber because in one of our groups, some people from the chamber made the comment. I think that was the community conversation group. So we tried to give you a sense, not just that somebody raised it, but who, kind, who, from what sector did it come? So if you see multiple initials or words in that box, it meant it was raised by a couple of different groups. Okay, uh, and then finally, the 2011 priority. That's from the last housing strategy and what it was ranked there. And then the middle column is where we sort of filled in if we thought there was work going on in that area. So it kind of relates to the timeliness question and what activity was going on there. And then finally, the last column is where you're ultimately where we're trying to get in the next two to three meetings where you've um, said which things you think are the top priorities or me and medium priorities. So that's, what and so that's sort of the layout of the matrix. <coughs> Any questions on the layout of the matrix? Otherwise, then we're ready to... Jump in to the content. Okay, so the first one is the topic of neighborhood vitality. And again, the shading is that which was done by staff, um, mostly our staff, I'll say, but we, we did consult some with city staff as well. Um, and so at this point, I'm not, my intent is not to walk through these because we did that at the last meeting. The first is, do you have any clarity? Yeah, just two immediate questions before we attempt at asking you to sort of do your sorting is, um, do you have any clarifying questions either about any of the items, the shading or why they were shaded, and or do you have any thoughts or comments about, um, are there other examples or other basic strategies that feel like from everything you've heard or whatnot, you're wondering if the group should add to the list? somebody else that we just promote mm -hmm. is this some of these we're probably already doing but do we have support from Bobble to make sure that we hit all of these or can we get some sort of verification that if we put this in our housing plan that it's actually carried out so I think that would be that's a that's a really good question for other support because cities often say we're happy to support all these things I think what this does is it says Okay, city and council, we're really asking you to, and the staff in doing their planning, think through what it might take to support this, and are they in a position to be able to do so within their day-to-day -day workload? Exactly. And, right. And so, in advancing this, you're sort of suggesting, um, and so that may be where in the second or third meeting, if you put something there as high, we may need to come back as staff and go, okay, how would we do that, and what are the implications of trying to do that? You want to comment there? <clears throat> sure, be happy to. I think it's a challenge um, where wherever there are um, partnerships that uh, can be created between the <coughs> Rossville, Rossville Municipal Government and other uh, other parties for affordable housing, whether it be a nonprofit or a uh, housing authority or you know, some other entity. Uh, it's generally <clears throat> fairly fairly simple to include some of some of that engagement in the day to day activities. Uh, if it's if it's an item that uh, requires uh, a huge number of staff hours, and uh, uh, we, you know if it's regulatory driven or um, <clears throat> or Really requires a staff person to be monitoring it on a on a longer term basis. That's a little more challenging, and we probably would have a difficult time <coughs> meeting those objectives without sort of rebalancing our, our programs, rebalancing our, our staff uh, resources to meet that. Um, now that doesn't mean that it could not be augmented at some point by additional help uh, either either through working through with Arch or providing those services in some fashion with extra staff members. Oftentimes we we uh, do get some help with administrative costs and, and 
not housing programs, uh, and we can leverage those costs to help um, make an ongoing activity. Uh, so I think from an administrator's point of view, at least, that's, that's what we need. Yeah, these, this, I would sort of add to that, that uh, or reinforce what, what Tom was saying is that these other supports could range pretty significantly on what other support needs. And so what might be interesting to do for now, or the first cut, is how important does it feel to you? Let's just sort of get a sense of if it feels important to you. And then part of what maybe our job needs to be in prepping for this next meeting is going through those and saying, well, boy, this is a lot of work, and how much will you get for it? So that you can sort of get to that impact column and say, is it worth for what you think you're getting to even suggest that needs to work, you know, that comes with it? Or somebody might say, you know, one of these I know in here is support applications to other funding sources. That's a pretty easy, that's more of making the commitment that you get it that that's important for us to do as a city, and it doesn't take a lot of time, but it does take a commitment to say we're willing to do that when projects come along. And that would be a relatively light staff touch, though you want the vote, and if the council blesses it, they're sort of saying, yeah, if that happens, we want our staff to write letters of support. That's not a lot of work. Some of these others in here, they're a fair, they would be a fair amount of work to do. So um, I would suggest for starting, Let's just see what you, if any of those rise to the top, and we'll come back and try to give you balanced perspective on how effective or how much work it would be. Yeah, I think that's the best approach. Okay. Can I ask a quick question? Uh, just a quick question. Um, if you think I'm missing something here, because a lot of what I was looking at here looked like focuses the city already as I was looking at priority, you know, picking what I thought was important, um, I was looking at it as a filter of the city's already doing this. Should we should we put the filter of does this help with affordable housing on something the city's already doing? Um, does that complicate what you're doing, or does that or does that? You know, when we're talking about a, a, something that's a, going to require a PUD in the development, and we put a filter of is affordable housing on it. I mean, it's all, some, some project's already going through a PUD process. Does that aggravate your workload, or is that kind of the normal thing in which your staff is doing already? I mean, would be doing already that they would just put that filter in on oh. top of it. Well, I don't know that it would aggravate workload that much. It, uh, it needs some. It needs some policy guidance as well as some regulatory guidance. Um, and it always works best if if we can explain explain the variables. To a developer up front uh, at a pre application meeting. Then they kind of know the, the rules to, to play by and work with. Um, springing it in mid process can be, can be yeah. difficult. Yeah. So, so, again, trying to pick up, I think that that's exactly part of the purpose of this document is for things that are ongoing, if you see, wait a minute, you could add an affordable housing filter and what that looks like for this, but it should be done. Well, the council gets this, and if you think that's important, then the council is sort of, in reviewing the plan, if they agree with that, then it's in the plan, and it is sort of directing that that work will have that filter. Okay. And yeah, so, that's exactly what this is about. Exactly, right. Mm -hmm. right. So it can be that. It can be different things. You know, some of it might be brand new things that the city hasn't done. And the whole objective here, some of this will be brand new. And like we said, that's why it's a several year plan. It's not just now, but right. So it's a combination of different. But that is definitely one of the ways of looking at using the strategy plan. So it sounds like when, where the rubber hits the road or meets the road, that when it's something brand new, we need to pick it very, very judiciously. Um, well, if, if, it's, if, it's, if it's all about, uh, 
it's all about really um, notifying uh, participants in, in the process, um, letting them know what the expectations are, uh, identifying the housing strategy elements that that um, may be involved with a, a project review. Yeah, um, uh, you know, simple things, communication. But but this is the start. I mean, this is where we, this is where we start this activity is is now. And uh, I would encourage you not you know not to uh, base base a lot of your uh, first. Uh, Cut of this on those kind of impacts, but, but as Arthur said, we'll, we'll, we'll analyze those and we'll get back to you. Okay. Yours is you've heard what the housing needs are, you know what your goals are. I would envision that it's both picking up on things you're doing as well as potentially doing new things. That's why it's a multi year. It may, they might, well, we can't do it the very first year, but we can maybe do it the second or third year because new, you know. So I think at this first filtering, it's what do you think makes the most sense for this that would feel like tools that could help this city implement its goals and policies? You know, one thing, as an example, uh, and uh, Arthur, you know, help, help it out. If we, if, if Bothell said we wanted to do, we wanted to uh, explore a subdivision for self-help housing, well, we might engage with a self-help housing <coughs> nonprofit group to do that, look, start looking at some pieces of real estate, um, that would all be preparatory work uh, before an entitlement, um, and then and then the entitlement would take place in year two, uh, possibly, and then construction in year three. And, and the other thing is, keep in mind that we always say on any of these you pick, there is still more work to be done. There will be the input that's explicit to that specific issue. And then you might in the end go, good college try, but it's not the right thing. You know, no, that's not going to work. But it sure was worth the effort to see if it could work. Okay, so that's the other thing too at this point. A little bit about what might be really good, important fits, the most effective. And the idea will be we'll come back in five years and we'll see what the results are for what you came up with tonight see what the results were, and we'll have the same conversation again in five years. But that's the other thing, too. It's not the end of the world. You know, this is just what you all feel is the most important things for the city to focus on the next few years. Good question. Arthur, maybe you can help me with this. Um, looking at the household type categories, mm -hmm. as I go through, down through the table, I keep thinking about um, our multifamily areas. Right. Or we may have families or maybe couples or whatever. Um, uh, trying to fit those people into one of these categories, and they may not be homeowners, mm -hmm. but they're not, they don't necessarily fit some of these other categories. Right. Can you, can you help? Maybe I'm looking at the categories wrong, but is there. I'm trying to fit the multifamily people. Right. Family area people who are maybe you know living in rental mm -hmm. uh, units. They're not homeowners, but they're. Right. And so I don't know if we can either we could add a column or or maybe I'm just looking at maybe you can help I, me just. I think out you'll see. The definition a bit well, in the first section, you're really not going to see that so much because it's about vitality and character, and that's what the first section is about. I think as we get into the subsequent section. If something's not shaded, it might mean we think it does potentially apply to everybody. It's not, it doesn't distinguish. In other words, when we're shading, we were trying to say this strategy in particular helps a certain type of household. It doesn't mean that it doesn't help multiple types of households. And you want to add something? Sure. I think that um, part of the answer is that in that set of columns under household type, that we didn't set out to put every type of household in there. Just those that the commission agreed after, remember when we did yeah. the mm -hmm. prioritizing things on the flip charts and so forth, that those uh, five groups kind of stood out as, 
as needing special attention. Uh, but the uh, if you're thinking of people in rental housing now that uh, they have trouble looking for finding affordable housing, then you also might want to pay attention to the income groups under right. affordability. Because yeah. that would capture any kind of household group at, at those different income levels. Uh, again, I mean, affordability is one thing, but neighborhood vitality in our sub areas and our, and our activity centers and that kind of thing, I, I hate to lose mm -hmm. that category in those areas when we're talking about neighborhood vitality. Right. So that's where I think one reason we thought, let's just do this first cut. Mm -hmm. And all these perspectives you have, see, you know, if that kind that's a good filter to have. See how it feels when you look at the things that are rising to the top, if that issue's been lost or not. And if it does, then we need to talk about that more. Yeah. So those are, I'm sure yeah, everybody has. Kind of a yeah. general suggestion that we add a category that would, that would fit that demographic. We don't need to do it now, but that on the table. And that demographic being? Uh, that's a good question. I mean, okay. you know, I'm looking at the five we have, and um, those are the ones that we selected, I guess, um, kind of up front and not having necessarily seen this final product. And so what I'm, what I'm concerned about is that our, our population centers that are growing, that we've uh -huh. planned for growth, mm -hmm. our downtown core, Canyon Park Center, you know, those, those areas where we're trying to um, attract people mm -hmm. and provide density and, and retail and commercial all at the same time mm -hmm. to handle growth, uh, that those people may not be homeowners, they may not be English limited, mm -hmm. they may not be seniors, they're probably not homeless, and they may not be young adults. So, so yeah. what I'm almost hearing you're saying is our growth centers need to work for everybody. Um, I don't know if that's what I'm saying. That might be consistent with what I'm saying, but I guess I'm, 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 right. I'm looking at these yeah. and saying those people, and I'm right. saying those people because I'm kind of having a hard time describing them, but they're mm -hmm. the, the people that live in those areas. Can I, can I take a stab? What about the, market the, the, rate don't renters? don't necessarily fit in those columns. So, Mar Are you thinking market rate renters? Um, doesn't have to be market rate. I mean, they they might be affordable housing in, a, in a, right. you know an activity center or a, a multifamily area. And and I think the dilemma with I, you're making a really important point. I'm not sure you have 20 columns in the end. I mean, gotcha. So that's what I'm saying is if you feel like that point you're making, and and actually so now here let's go back to all our tools. I think what you're sort of say, stating is I, I'm pretty sure this is going to be in the, um, I'm trying to find, I think it's attachment three. Um, you came up with a, uh, that's a summary of the housing goals. I'm trying to find the attachment. You have gap areas, you know, mm -hmm. that are identified. And so you, you've got other elements in here. And when we get done, that, you know, one of the last things we'll be doing after you sort of filter to the top, you're going to say why you like the things that filter the top. And so one of those may be the points you're making down. We may document that in words in the, over, in the summary. It may not show up explicitly in black and white in the matrix because what you're describing isn't a specific population. It's about having different choices, potential. I don't know what the right words I, are. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I thought of it as a household type. Okay. So I, when I read household type, the heading, I was kind of thinking, okay, well, what about this type? So, but I, I, I'm, my intent is not to like, you know, add and redo this whole thing. Right. So if there are suggestions, I'm certainly open to that. But I, I mean, I, I'll have to agree with that. I think it's a household type, it seems like to me too. It, it may fit under some of these other categories within it, but I think, you know, if you're going to have homeowner here, I mean, renter next to it, whether it's market rate or some other term, it, it seems to me to almost be more, I don't want to lessen the significance of any of these things, but like say in English limited, for instance, I would think that as far as the amount of population that's being served by that term, I mean, like Roger was saying, I mean, there's a, there's a lot of rentals going up and I think, I think it may justify having its own category, but at the same time, 
Okay. I mean, or looking at it later at least. Okay. Yeah, I'm good with kind of going through it and see how it feels. Right. And then maybe we can revisit right. it at the end. Coming and back. I, and I think this, uh, the household type column is something that's probably not going to be in the final matrix. This is kind of a, a reminder of that early recession that we had, and and these were particular household types uh, that uh, that uh, rated high. So so just mm -hmm. to kind of remind you that those were certain uh, uh, types that you wanted to focus on, and also the, so don't don't confuse household type with housing type. So. Um, I'm just, Multi yeah. yeah, no, I'm so, looking yeah. at so, all the other so categories. Yeah. In order to help move, yeah. I mean, we got the point, we've yeah. noted it, it may need more move, discussion. Yeah. Let's move on. So Agreed. I'm trying to. Yeah, move on. Appreciate your challenge of keeping us moving. <laughs> <laughs> other clarify, now, so that's questions about the neighborhood vitality strategies or examples or missing items in this one. Are you ready for the first challenge? Before the we do that, can I, uh, I'm not sure if my point I think uh, falls under neighborhood vitality or housing choice and supply, right. but I'm, I've kind of stated it before, and the the greenest, most affordable house is the one that's already there. And there's mm -hmm. there definitely are a lot of houses that are beyond their lifespan. Um, and I don't know if it's if it's put in here somewhere, but I, I wish there was some type of way to work with the development community. Um, to either uh, to retain some of the, the maybe the older homes within a new development. So and, and I'm going to I'm going to be leading here. I'm looking at A5, and I'm wondering if what you feel like is another example under A5. I think you're right. Yes, I'd be okay, okay with that. All right, and that example is say it again, just so we capture it. Retention of aging but adequate residential housing. Okay. Um, so not necessarily just with so the new developments, even in a single a restaurant. You know, basically, you know, a person comes in, tears it down, puts up a much more expensive unit. I don't know if there's some way to to add something to demolition costs to go into the affordable housing for the city, or if there's incentives for developers to be able to restore it rather than tear it down? I don't, I don't know. Would it, would it also include potentially um, what they did up in a neighborhood in Vancouver where they allowed some larger homes to be split into multiplexes? Yes. And maintain the exterior. They look the same, but... And I'm glad you reminded me of that because I was thinking about that as we were going through this and I was envisioning in a new development or, or not, but especially in a new development, they're like, this house looks completely different than the ones we're building. But, but maybe that's the one you either, yeah, maybe you can make it into a, a multifamily and or, or, and or you require the developer to, if they're going to tear that home down, the one they build needs to be kind of in the same market rate as the one that was there before. Right. Okay. Right. I like the I like the item too about being able to to split a structure up into okay so one dwelling unit. we'll add that as a one two three four the sixth example under a five okay other thoughts okay you're ready for your first crack at this so on your sticky write down your three choices, and again, you can either just pick a whole category like A2 or A4, or you can do A4 with qualifications. Do you like the first or the third or any combination of bullets? It's, it's still one vote either way. It just gives us more clarification where you're at with that. Does that make sense? Are we sticking in A here, or is this for the whole list? This is was just, just only a? doing Section A. Okay. Oh, we're doing three from A? Yep, three from A. We're going to do that for each section. And then while we start talking about the next section, Dave's going to collate, tabulate your responses right up here on the, right? I'm is, that the try. is that the game plan? That's the try. I'm going to try. We're going to see how this works, how our high technology works here today. <laughs> so, Arthur. Yeah. 
So Arthur, if we have sub points that we want to, can we just like count down from the top? Yes, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Count down from the top if there's certain bullets here. And you can, if there's multiple bullets, you know, you just say A5, I like these three or one, or, or just say A5 because you like them all, or you're not getting specific at this point. So it can be, you know, A2 number three. Right. And, oh, thank you. If you want to rank your priority, that's, you know, if you clearly have a, I have a first, second, or third, that would be good to indicate as well. Thank you for doing that. We forgot to mention that. While you're waiting, you can start looking through the next sections and being prepared for those while we do the tally. Yes. We can, you know, we can take a couple, you know, let's first get everyone's votes in and then we'll take them. So we want to come back and once the results are done, give you a chance to talk about those, but we can start doing the clarifying questions for the next section while. No, we still got a couple more. So we'll yeah. Don't feel pressure. If you didn't add a priority, shall I assume by the order or just or just rate them all the same? Anybody? I assume we can. By order? Yeah. Or anybody I mean, claim this one? That was my understanding. Oh, no rank. Okay. We're good fine. One of the other reasons we thought this might be a helpful approach to do is not only to help you start sorting, but for the public hearing, people will have a chance to sort of see what they'll be able to respond to sort of something that's new as well. And it can either help reinforce or raise questions. I'm almost done. Okay, so while those are being tabulated, and we'll come back and look at the results, uh, why don't we move to the second section? So this is now, section B is housing choice and supply. So 
clarifying questions, comments on examples or strategies not considered? Quick, quick question. Yes. Uh, for B10, where ADUs are spelled out, yeah. uh, would that automatically, would, the, would those uh, conditions in creating ADUs be included in B6, where it's listed as one of the innovative housing types? Oh, I meant to take that out of the innovative housing types. So no ADU there? Well, in, I think what we're... I think what we're saying is that we want to distinguish between the two. Because the, what in a sense now, if you feel really strongly, I mean, this is where you guys get to play and mix around with this. But I think because when I look at um, the others, those are typically, they're, they're forms of owner occupancy that are different, you know, where the resident lives in them, where an ADUs, your rules are that's like an auxiliary use of your property that you rent out. So it's a different enough um, type. Now what we could do is maybe, and we had a separate, since there was a separate strategy just for ADUs. So you want to completely take out in I could take it house. out there, but you guys can debate that more. And I would suggest if you leave it in B6, it should be its own line. It should be its own example. And so that you can distinguish between innovative housing as described without the word accessory dwelling unit in it. But, but, it, but then would we have to carry it over because cottages are almost like ADUs, aren't they? Um, when I'm, uh, that's one reason I wanted to distinguish between them. A cottage, an ADU could be a cottage if you allow detached, but cottages are meant to mean detached, de, you know, small units that are owner occupied. You're making this hard. I told you guys how you have to think tonight. <laughs> I told you it was going to be a hard night. <laughs> okay, so tell us, so tell us how, how you okay. intend B6 so to look like. I and would I'll suggest just edit. you s scratch the word accessory units under the first example under B6. But now my question to you as a group is, you can either just leave ADUs by itself as a B10, or we could add a third example under B6 of ADUs. Seems to me if we're going to take it out and put it as a separate item, we should just strike it because it's already in. I think strike it in B6 and keep it in B10 is my vote. Agreed. Okay. Since we have the... Right, you, have the, you can vote it there. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> other so, questions? So, <laughs> well, I guess tagging on that, the other item in, in B6 mm -hmm. is clustering, which is also an A. That's right. Yeah, that was where we had so some that, that you're right. And that's um, not that it that's one of the few places. we tried to eliminate as much overlap as we could and we sort of felt like um, that the clustering in A was done more for environmental protection and the clustering in B is as much and you can do both was to get diversity of housing types. So that's why I couldn't figure out where only one place for it to land because you guys talked about it both ways. And A is more about environmental sustainability and things like that. It's not a perfect world. Yeah, so I mean, <laughs> I don't know that I would call those smaller homes innovative necessarily. Mm -hmm. They might, there may be a variety of, create a more variety of, of a housing type with the cluster, but I don't know about being innovative necessarily just through the clustering provision. I mean, that's just my, kind of okay. my read well, on then, it. It seems then, to me like it's, then it's less innovative, so, more. So what my suggestion is, if you like B6 and you like the first bullet, but you don't think the second bullet applies as much, be clear and say B6 first bullet. And leave that out because you feel like that. Was oh, we're not we're not modifying the list. We're just voting. Right. I'm gotcha. saying right okay. at this point. Okay. Uh, I mean, we. I think we're looking more gotcha. unless something feels really out of place, like the ADUs, because that was in the same section. We had the same thing, so that was a worthwhile clarification. But that's here where I think one way you could handle it, just to keep you know, is to distinguish that the second bullet feels like it's not that relevant to the topic of innovative housing. 
and some others may feel differently and that's what the second meeting will be is for you guys to talk through that if it filters to the top okay I have one question on B before I okay. turn mine in. The fourth bullet under B5, should that be under B7? Um, it, you, that. Um, it, yes, that would probably make sense to do. Did I earn a fourth vote then? <laughs> so before, so you're already, so you, so everyone okay with that? Moving the fourth bullet in B five to the second, yes. the second bullet for B four. <coughs> okay. All right. Are these already the next group? Yes. Have some people already turned in their next. Yes. So make sure Just you write what set. Oh yeah, you do. Wait, someone's already done C. Yeah, just leave them there. Oh, okay. Somebody's already done. You yeah. guys are getting way ahead of us. Great. That's fine. Do we have A, Ray, or you want to you want to keep doing this and then we'll come just back? Just keep and, going. Let's just keep going. Okay. And then we'll come back and we'll talk about all these. Great. So section B. I see one, two, three. Three here. Four, five, six. Anybody else working on B still? They seem to be missing. I don't have B in yet. Oh, okay. Okay, we got one. Okay. We'll wait for Roger to finish B, and then we'll ask clarifying questions on C. Seven slash B. I don't know if we want to encourage changing the matrix to get you more votes. <laughs> well, I think we can. Okay, that's is that your B? Okay, so section C, this is housing affordability. Any clarifying questions or discussion of strategies that don't feel like they're there? I, have a question. Or I got a question. Okay. On um, C10, mm -hmm. surplus public land, make it available at reduced or no cost, would that be for like tent cities? Page seven? C10. I think it, um, I think what, what was the use? So typically it's for a per, well, that, um, that could be, in um, other words, are you saying short-term use for tent cities? Oh, I'm just wondering, you know, make it available for at reduced or no cost. Are you just talking about land it's, just for temporary use or for a permanent giving When we wrote it, it, we were talking more about permanent use, but that's an interesting example that I think could be added, which is for temporary use, which could be okay. examples of that are Tent City, which Woodenville has done. They've used public land to site their Tent City because they decided where they were potentially going elsewhere in the city was like, that doesn't make a lot of sense, and we've got some land, so why don't we do that? Like, they decided by City Hall last fall. That's one example. Your two neighbors, so let's have examples. Kenmore is using um, a fire station uh, that's been, or a sheriff's office that's been closed for several years now. And Mary's Place, you ever heard of Mary's Place? Mm -hmm. um, they're looking, there's conversation about Mary's Place being in that building. So they won't be there forever necessarily, but they'll use that space for the meantime. Um, so those are two examples of temporary use, and I did not have that there. So I think that's potentially a fourth example. But yeah, it came up, uh, Commissioner Zorns, um, like yesterday at the at the senior housing. It was I guess they, they were given there was an example there of a of a project I believe Arthur or, or Mike. Um, yeah, basically they essentially granted right. the land. They basically gave the land to this nonprofit, <coughs> and they developed. I think it was was it. 
perm wasn't was every unit in it affordable? Yeah. Yeah. So there's so so more times than not, it's been to make it available to be developed with housing that has affordability, and sometimes it's free and sometimes it's not. So that parcel you just described, we had to pay the city what they paid for the land 10, 15 years earlier. Because they originally bought the land because they thought the bypass might, for a while, I don't know if you've been around, they were talking about having the bypass go on the other side of the river. And they had bought land in anticipation of that. And then when that changed, they didn't need it for that. But they still had to reimburse the funds that were used to pay for the land. What was the name of that again, the development? Riverside Landing. Okay. So oh, it's Caddy Corner it. from the Senior Center. Um, so that was on a piece. Part of it was county land, and part of it was um, city land. And if you notice, there's a little trail there. Because the county bought it, part of a piece of land to have a trail. And their trail was going to be along the street, and by the city swapping, and the county gave up half their land. They made just big enough parcel for that building to get built. The trail is still there. And so everybody, and then they reimburse the city for the costs it, it, they incurred originally to buy the land. And other times it's been free. So it, it, it's all over the map how much it takes. But um, I think that's good to add a fourth example of temporary use. Any other clarifying oh. questions or comments or comments about Section C? I have a comment and a question about Section C. I just want to note that on C11, you have it indicated that market rate uh, stakeholders had an interest in that. Yes. But in my notes, I show that both nonprofits and uh, housing right. authority were Thank interested you. in that. You're, you are absolutely correct. And then my question is, and I don't want to play with the matrix too much, but C12, the last bullet there, provide resources, counseling assistance mm -hmm. for homeowners that are in jeopardy of losing their homes. And then the first bullet under C13, tenant counseling, I'm wondering if there's a way that we could mash that up because it seems like a similar resource. And I think it's probably important to both to uh, kind of avoid homelessness for people that are on the, on the fringe. Or would I have to choose one? <laughs> I, I mean, we're, we're trying to help people. So, so this is where. Stay at home, so. Right, they, right. And there are two very, very different needs um, population groups uh, and, and the skill set. So to say you're going to combine the two, you wouldn't use the same body probably to combine the two. Okay. You would have, you know, there are people who specialize in foreclosure counseling and there are people who specialize in tenant counseling and I don't know if I've ever seen a group that does both. Maybe there could be, but my history and why I would have naturally done what's shown <coughs> here is because One's working with one population and one's working with another population and stuff. Now, those are the kind of things, though, that's what we're here to talk about and work through. So if you vote for one but put in parentheses, I think it should be, you know, if you voted under the ownership one or the tenant one, you should say, I think counseling for both rental and owners is important. So we don't forget that and we talk about it more. All right. Thank you. Can I just yeah. ask a favor? Because this is, the C section is huge. Could we have a fourth? I can live with that idea because you're right. This no, is a wait, wait a second. Right. We've already got three votes. I can come. Three can, people I have already submitted theirs. We, you know what we can do? Here, here's a thought. You did this to us once before. <laughs> Start with your three. And as, we, as you see the results, if you're dying to say something got missed, like maybe it got covered by other people, or you want to reinforce things, we can go back and say, if you had one more vote, do you feel like you need another vote because something's missing? You did that a couple months ago with us, as I recall. So how about that? And if it's really important, we'll remember it, right? Right. <laughs> but this point involves art, so. <laughs> <laughs> they can make that oh, sorry. <laughs> no, kids, no, no, sorry. I'll take the risk. <laughs> I tried. <laughs> Any other clarifying questions on C? Everyone voting away, it looks like already. Are we still 
Are people still doing C? Yes. Okay. Thanks, Jenny. Got uh, four. I think there's still. Oh. One more C. So. The slow guy. Yeah. <laughs> the thoughtful one. Okay, I like that. <laughs> I'm gonna start ta trying to tally. So one of the things to be thinking about, not for this meeting, but when we try to put this together, is we're really going <coughs> to want to be doing rationale, why we select certain ones. So if, as you're doing this, reasons why come to your mind, jot them down um, so that you don't forget them. And um, you know, not on these here, but just sort of separately write down why, um, because that's one of the areas that we will want to make sure we emphasize, you know, we cover so that the council can see the logic of your wisdom. So, but that'll be something that we do as we move forward. But I'm saying because you're thinking really hard about this, your brain's probably thinking about that right now. And you might forget some of those reasons why later. But we will talk, and we can talk about that when we go back and revisit during the meeting. We'll try to, and we'll have that on the record. So, Keep that in mind when we do this. Give us your rationales, too, so we can note those down. So if you don't write them down, you can speak them as we go back and review. Okay, so we have all this season, I believe. So questions on Section D. This is special needs and senior housing. Comments, questions? Mm-hmm. On D3, yes. adult family homes uh, permit adult family homes in all areas designated for commercial or residential purposes in accordance with state law. Yes. Um, are we other places where the city of Bothell is not complying with state law on this? We, we think we're good. And so this is a good example of one that maybe say, let's just put that on monitoring. You know, we've got to check every once in a while to make sure we're good. But we think, you know, you'll see here, you'll see activity, it says done actually there. Uh, or, or, you know, and it shows under 2011, okay. done. Okay. So that's an example of one that says, that's in fact, I think it might even be on the monitoring list. Let me take a look here. I would think even if it wasn't on mon monitoring, it's something that, or if it wasn't done, it's something that could be on monitoring because right. 
we have to do it whether we as a yes. group decide we should or not, I guess. Exactly. And I'm trying to see if it already was last time if we did that. Um, and I'm not sure we, I think, senior um, public plan procedures review, review administrative. It's not explicitly, so I don't think. Um, so that's one we could say, let's add that to the monitor. You know, we get it, but it should be done, but let's make sure we stay in compliance. And then I have one more uh, D11 public involvement. It, the description makes it appear that it's specifically directed at just addressing negative perceptions, but, uh, and I maybe I just haven't seen it, but is there a place where we're, we're getting public involvement to get uh, nonprofits involved in, in that sort of thing to, I'm thinking of the people that sat at the panel here that are seem right. more than anxious to get involved in the city of Bothell with creating opportunities for, for uh, low income housing. Right. So you're talking about D11? I'm talking about, well, I'm, I'm commenting that could that be expanded to include that or, or am I just missing that? Is that, is that already addressed somewhere else? I I think, are, you, are you referring to D11? Yes. That, that's where it says work with those players. And that's why you'll notice in their activity, it's like other support. So this is one of these examples from the very first question that was asked, where we're saying, yeah, the idea is we would work with other groups. Um, but it says it specifically to address negative perceptions related to homeless housing. Right. And you're saying it seems, it seems broader than that. Okay. It seems like promoting okay. um, okay. housing for homeless or, or okay. low income housing. Um, Basically, I, I think, I don't know, I, Let's see that's a good catch. I was thinking that too. It's okay. basically doing what we're doing right now, reaching out to groups and meeting with them, mm -hmm. having the opportunity to meet with them, but. Well, I think it's 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 even. just creating so, creating reasons why those nonprofits okay. would want to be here, you know, like, yep. like we talked about with that task force. Um, um, I'm looking to see if. You're right, okay, so. Yes, that could be expanded to be broader. Um, so yes, that could be expanded to be broader. So I would put that for myself. Uh, I'm just thinking ahead. I would list that as a priority for me if it were expanded to that, but if it weren't, I wouldn't. So how do, well, let's open that up to the full group to see if that makes sense that that the 11 should be for a variety of housing needs and not explicitly homeless and special needs. And the negative but perception. But that's not, that's not that, what I'm, uh, Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, my point is it's not, I mean, I think it does say other housing and special needs. It's, it's specific to at, help working with those entities to address negative perceptions. It doesn't say, uh, and, and that's one very specific thing. We're gonna go out and we're gonna educate people that there's nothing negative about being homeless as opposed to we're going to go out and work with these public groups to try to commit to convince them to come to our city and 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 develop these oh, sorts oh, of projects. Oh, I think this was meant to then it's a wording issue maybe. So you're saying that under D11 it should be about talking to the broader community? A broader community about more than just right. negative perceptions about housing. Talking to the broader community about how do we get how do we how do we attract these public groups that want to make public uh, low-income housing happen, affordable okay. housing happen. Can anybody explain that better? Yeah, like work with housing advocates, neighborhood planning groups, property owners, et cetera, to address special needs in senior housing within the community or something like that? I mean, my, my, I guess my take would be, or my ad would be, we want to make it easier or team with those groups or agencies to, to provide that service of whatever they do for the homeless folks to try to move them to a different place. <coughs> but this is not very specific, but in my mind, I, I guess one of the things that I've kind of wanted to see in this mm -hmm. plan is either from a code perspective or a, you know, whatever our financial planning perspective, how can we uh, make it easier for groups in our community that, that, that that's their passion? Mm -hmm. How can we make it easier for them to do what they do serving those groups in our community? Okay. 
whether that's in the code or you know wor however that works itself out. I, I'm not sure how you're defining community, but I would broaden that to say not just within the city, but attract. I, I'm thinking again, the people who are sitting here. The the um, guy was uh, he was with Hope. Is that right? Housing, Housing Hope. Um, you know, he he was very clear that. If there, there are certain things that the city could do that would mm -hmm. enhance our ability to come in and do projects there. I guess that's what I'm getting at. And and so was the other the person with the housing authority. I think said a very similar thing that they're. Uh, so D seven. I'm feeling like I'm I'm hearing something that feels like seven and eleven. Um, the, yeah, D7, is, if it were not specific to low-income seniors, would be almost right. exactly what I'm talking about. So maybe right. maybe it's something we could change there. And, make, make and I think a, you'll see that under affordable, and this is where you know we might take your theme and combine several of what we wrote originally and modify it to get at what you're trying to say. I think in Section C, you're going to find, like, well, I'm not sure C6 C6 seems pretty clear that's a make funding, but I thought there was um, I'm trying I thought there was something in C that was more than just could support it, could applications. I, could I toss in an idea because I think it's very close to what C17 is, which was my choice number 4. <laughs> it, where it's participating in interjurisdictional efforts efforts could you also dovetail in not-for-profit uh, agencies mm -hmm. that can can you put what yeah. what Commissioner yeah. Clark is talking about could you put that a broader description there under C-17 for out of lawful proper mm -hmm. support to come in and interface in with our needs well, we also had something about participating in reach countywide efforts too. There's a policy, so I'm feeling like um, there's there's sort of two levels potential. I mean, getting more into the subtlety of the difference between those and whether or not that subtlety is needed for you um, in what you're trying to say. Um, the arch, the the C17, and C21 and I'm going to skip over to and D13 are sort of all ones where through a more formal government system you're working with other governments who also involve nonprofits to sort of lay out the plans and the strategies whereas what um, Eric was saying at the beginning was Housing Hope, when they're trying to do something, are we making it so that they can do the thing they're doing in our community? Okay? Mm -hmm. So to me, those feel like two different things. One is participating in the big regional thinking and supporting regional type, maybe funding, et cetera. But the other is then what do we in our city do so that the groups who are then using those systems land in town here? And we could take that feels like an explanation. We could have that cover both affordable housing and special needs and have that, you know, that distinguishment, but, but have it be for homeless and other affordable housing and see, you know, other special needs. Participate in regional conversations for all those types of needs and also look at local efforts for all those types of needs. Is that making any sense? Not getting lots of nods, so <laughs> I'm not sure I'm there. It makes sense to me. Did, Commissioner Clark, does that is that addressing what you want it to address? Um, I'm not sure. Okay. What I'm hearing from you is we want to help organizations be able, by one, creating a good community attitude, and B, doing whatever else we need to do so that stuff lands in town here. By yeah, a, a good community attitude is obviously very important, but you also have to make it right. financially viable for right. these. Right, that's right. So I'm saying it's both, the local effort is both acceptance and Promotion. technical things that yeah. also make it feasible. Mm -hmm. 
right? Yep. yep. For specific agencies, and it's not just limited to seniors or the homeless. You're saying that's also for other, like Housing Hope and what they're talking about. Yeah. Is that? Yeah, I mean, like Kristen, when uh, from the Housing Authority talked about expedited processes, mm -hmm. um, relaxing of maintenance. I'm not sure what the. I, Look at my notes from last time, but those, those sorts of things, yeah. And some of those are called out, okay. Um, yeah. But we could, um, well, I mean, we called that kind of stuff out in, well, I think there is, is there expedited? Let's see. We may not have. Arthur, I'm looking at B8, and I'm thinking procedures and regulations could have, they could cover right. all right. housing That's, styles or types. I, I was and I was looking for if there was something comparable for the C and D sections, and I'm not. And the, so the question is, do you take B8 and have something similar where it's targeted specifically, or does B8 cover it? In my in my mind, it covers it because it's about housing supply and. Uh, right. But then maybe choice, it still yeah. makes sense to yeah. do something like what Eric is saying under affordable housing slash special needs about being conscious of that for those forms of housing. Well, maybe maybe it's uh, it's adding an example under under B eight or or maybe even you're right, Commissioner Hampton's right. It does talk about. Um, sorry, I'm losing track of my spot here. Uh, th this that is under housing choice and supply, and I think if we just broaden that to for say for all income levels or for affordable and market rate housing or something. So like would that. you ever in, in thinking about those two? Would you ever think of a circumstance where something under B eight would be explicitly for certain affordability levels and not just housing in general? Well, uh, um, possibly the multifamily tax exemption might be for. Wouldn't that be? Yes, that for would be an example. Housing, um, right. Parking standards might be treated differently if it's. Fee, uh, there was also, they were talking about mitigation fee waivers or something like right. that. Which those, I, those types of things. And those, I think, are called, aren't they called out? I thought we already had that. Uh, oh, actually, go to C4. I'm sorry. There they are. There's C, C4. There it is. <laughs> That's where you have examples of types of land use provisions or sort of related to reg development mm -hmm. that would be specifically targeted for certain types of affordability <coughs> and stuff. So C4 sort of gets at the regulatory environment. But there, I think you're, where you started with was there might be other things the city is also doing to create a welcoming environment. Yeah, I. And that's. The word developers in there is the only thing. It seems so, what, so, what I would propose at this point, let me go back to the public involvement one and see if people feel like. Two things could be done to D11, at least for the next part of the conversation. And that we do one, make it also affordability and, you know, uh, other kind of needs besides just special needs and homeless. And two, it be more than just about accept that, you know, sort of percent, but also look at how our regulatory environment or other things in our community can support the efforts of groups dealing with the need. Mm -hmm. So make D11 a little broader on both of those fronts. I don't want to cause a problem, but I, I don't want to cause a problem, but I would be against that because I selected D11 because I think that there's a big public perception issue when it comes to affordable housing and people have this fear that these people that don't belong in their neighborhood are going to come to their neighborhood. And I don't think that's true. And so I think it's an important thing to consider. Okay. I, I would agree with that. And I would more suggest that you look at the one you were, the, the one in C, C4. Okay. 
and maybe just put some wording in there that makes it clear that it's not just developer incentives, it's, or maybe expand on what that means, because I suppose Hope and, uh, and uh, King County, or the Housing Authority and that kind of thing, in, in a certain sense, are developers, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I hear a make C4 a little broader. I, I would agree with that. And then, but how about then the first half of what I suggested for D10? D11? D11, which is also affordable housing. Oh. I would agree with that, yeah. Expand that to be, you were saying that. Yeah, because you were saying there was a negative perception with affordable housing. Yeah, and I, I, I would think that would be a good idea. I kind of fit that into special housing, but I, mi I misread that because it's housing for special needs. Right. So. Let's clarify it's broader than just Yeah, just to examples. make it more clear. Okay. All right. So if that's the case, I'm going to. I want to change my C vote. One of my C votes. Okay. You can't. It's too late. So there was a C three, or a, there was a, there was a C ten vote. Mm -hmm. So I'd like you to remove one of those and add the C four, the expanded C four, if that's possible. As, as your number three. Uh. That was my number three. Yeah. You, you. I'd actually like to move it up, but that's a little probably out of the question. Okay, it's not the end of the game. Yes, here. Uh, yeah. Yeah, but we're voting. <laughs> <laughs> America's voting. <laughs> this is more like the European parliamentary system. This is the first round, then there'll be a second round when nobody, because nobody gets a majority, unless somebody gets a majority in one of the sections. So are people working on D now? Other comments about D? doing that on purpose. <laughs> so what we're thinking here tonight, um, rather than try to have you do the second vote tonight, because you're going to see everything, is just let's look at the results and get your comments, your reactions to them. Um, and what we could do is try to see if, when you see this, what I'd really love to hear comments on is how it feels, if there's particular strategies that you voted for as your top whatever and you want to say why you thought they were important. Um, and then the third is for each section, you know, when we're done with that section, 
and you see what's up there, go, why, why, haven't, why didn't we get more on this one? I feel like we left something out, given what I'm seeing as this preliminary list. And, and then what we would propose to do is pull all this together for you uh, for the next meeting, and then at the next meeting do that shorter, you know, the multi-sections in, in multi at one time, look at which one. So we'll up, mark all this up and shade the ones that you had and, and see that. But let's maybe for tonight just try to take each section and talk them through a little bit more and try to get each section feeling like it's relatively a lot of good initial thoughts on the, pay, on the table for you to continue the discussion at the next meeting. Does that work? And we're getting close, it looks like. So well, that's what I'm saying. I'm not even going to try to do that. That's, I can't see how to do that tonight with what we have. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, no, you're right. Right. So that's, I mean, that's the dilemma is I think I can't look at the time. So I don't, ideally, yes, that's what, we, that's what we'll do next meeting is have something like that. Carry on. Well, we kind of need to see the results so yeah, that they can carry see. Carry on with something else then. Hmm? Carry on with something else then. <laughs> <laughs> hmm? So, excuse me? At this point, since everything's recorded, your comments about rationale, et cetera, just let's talk them through is what we want to do. Oh, okay. You, you're saying you can you sort of have the results for A? I could. I'm, I haven't okay. verified them or compared them with Right, but you're David probably pretty down, close. He, Mike's probably pretty close. So let's go back to Section A. And as soon as Dave's, we'll put it up there so you can see the results. But why don't you verbally so state what I'll they are? So I'll give you the, um, the number of votes and, um, and the number of points which I think Dave is, is doing by um, if somebody ranks something number one and they got three points, number two, they got two points, number three, they got one point. That's right. And then if you didn't rank, rank them, uh, you got each of your votes got two points. So everybody got six points of right. worth of vote. So, so the, uh, the top vote getter was um, A2, design standards. That had uh, 10 people voted for it. I'm sorry, five people voted for it. And it got a total of 13 points. Now, there were three um, strategies that got four votes, A1, A5, and A7. Uh, Sub-area planning, repair and preservation, and infrastructure. Now, I'm not going to try and break out or distinguish between the ones that, you know, wanted to vote for particular examples. I'm just kind of grouping them together at that level. So of those three, repair and preservation got a couple more points, like a total of nine points. The other two, A1 and A7, both got seven points. A1 and A7? Right. And some of those were uh, votes for specific bullets under the larger heading. So right. Um, which so which bullets got votes? The bullets that got votes uh, <coughs> preserve existing housing stock. I'm not sure if I characterize. That's the one that we added to A5. The, the six bullet uh, got four points. Um, provide pedestrian transit. Connectivity, A, A7, uh, the first bullet under A7 got three points. And these are included in the to totals mm -hmm. that uh, Mike gave you. Uh, A2, the third bullet under A2, uh, BUD and clustering provisions got three points. 
So those are the specific. Isn't your, isn't your showing A1 has 10 points, which would be number one? I think we have uh, number A2 is number one. Yeah, in so A1 by its, the, the general category got 10 points by my tally. Uh, A2 got, the general category got nine plus oh, got the it. Uh, PD. It's, it's added the in right here. Yeah, got three. Right. You said A1 got 10 points? That's what I had. Okay. I, yeah, we'll, right. we'll, we'll compare notes. Yeah, we'll, we'll get it all okay. clear. But so there is your relative. That hmm. gives you some sense of how these sorted out. So now I'd like to open it up for people's comments on, on section one. A. Hmm? Section A. Yeah, on section A. Sort of why you like the ones. If um, looks like there was a lot of overlap. Um, and if there's some of yours that didn't get five and four or four, um, make your pitch for them. And then reasons you like the ones that you like. So, and let's just take like, and I, how late? I, let's sort of time this so we hit on each one. So I don't know what you you decide. Go down. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, so just a quick note on my votes. Um, I tended, to, even though we're looking at a housing plan, looked at, I weighed the infrastructure components of uh, the A section, I think higher than some of the others. Mainly because um, with I think there's a million people set to come to this area over the next 10 to 15 years, and want to make sure that we we're able to still move people around and it's still a livable place. Um, that and I I've found a statistic online haven't fact checked it but over the last five years I think the population has grown from 33,000 to 42 or something so there's just a ton of people coming to the area, and so I put a little bit more emphasis on. Um, infrastructure and I guess with a one uh, park facilities and open space so we maintain a livable city for whoever decides to move here not to dispute that we're we are growing very quickly but the the growth uh, from the last census uh, included 5,000 about 5,000 plus in annexation so So before we start jumping in, uh, Chair, do you want to sort of have an overall time frame that the commission wants to spend going back through and commenting? So yeah, I mean, have, maybe within what, like, what do you think, guys? Can, can we get through this in like 15 minutes or so? Or so that means we're taking really quick comments, and again, yeah. you'll have because I think next we'll meeting. next meeting we'll have right, time to. This is a chance. So keep your comments real quick and to the point, so we can summarize them and stuff. But yeah, so. Okay. So that's like five minutes for each section. So next meeting, you, there will be a tally yes. of tabulation. Yes, and all the comments you make now, we'll start incorporating in as well. I'll, I'll say the top four vote getters were my top four go vote getters, and uh, I think I was drawn to A2 uh, because I think you know the most influence we can have on on. Um, Neighborhood vitality is through code amendments because people are going to build and develop according to that and whatever our priorities show up in there That's that's what's going to show up over the next 10 to 15 years as far as the decisions we make I'd just like to tag on to that too and say you know We've we've spent a lot of time on that and I think I think it's been time well worth it um, So that was a high priority for me, too comments on this section results uh, one I wanted to vote for was green standards but it doesn't sound like anyone's really utilizing the green PUD so not saying it's something we shouldn't emphasize moving forward but I don't know Dave can you weigh in on that is it it's not widely used is it uh, it hasn't been uh, widely used it hasn't been on the books for that long but um, the but the other thing that's happening is our our stormwater code uh, has been 
enhanced uh, or the state stormwater code that we adopt uh, so that it really makes uh, makes almost all PUDs uh, meet come close to meeting the green PUD uh, standards. Okay, any other comments on that? <coughs> All right, should we jump to, why don't we jump to the next one? So this is housing choice and supply. Okay, what I have there is the top vote getter was B6, flexibility and regulations, um, and it had nine points. How many people Three. voted it? Five. And again, uh, one of those was specifically to the innovative housing, housing types, uh, the first bullet under that, in that category. Okay. After that, it was pretty much nose and nose. Uh, number uh, B5, B8, B10, and B12 all got three votes. And, but and B12 uh, had eight points. So that stood up a little bit higher than the others. The others that I mentioned had five votes, or five points each. Which one had the eight? Which one had eight? We're, we're going to have 12. to compare some notes here because okay. I had B12 getting four points and B10 getting nine. But it, it sounds like once you guys compare notes, but then right. But which, we're, we're, yeah, let's just we're just getting a relative right. idea. Let's get yeah. which one's got how, which one's got three votes? B five, five, eight, ten, and twelve. Okay, so why don't we for right now look at it at that level for first? So those were the ones that. Does everyone get that? Um, B six got five votes. Five, eight, ten, and twelve got three. And obviously some others got two or less, but. Yeah, B4 and B9 got two votes each. Okay. So reactions and initial comments. I, I'm a big fan of B12, the Condominium Act at the state level, and I know that that's something that's <coughs> going to be a, it's going to be something that they would have to go to the state and try to change the laws to make condo development a little bit easier, but we're running out of uh, developable land and we're trying to concentrate our population growth in more urban type centers. And there's not a whole lot of uh, housing options for people who want to buy into the market in those centers. There's some townhome developments and a couple of condo projects coming online right now, but there's nothing like the, uh, the buildings that we're seeing for, <coughs> for rental properties. And I think that allowing people to move into those would give people who want a single family home and a residential neighborhood more opportunities to buy into that. I mean, for, for example, you know, I have some friends that would love to stay in Bothell and buy in a downtown area, but there's no, right. there's nothing to buy. Okay. Other initial comments? Um, just for the specifics, you know, just choosing the three that leapt out, the uh, excess ADUs, the manufactured housing, so B10, B9, and um, B6, I felt really spoke purposefully to affordable ho housing on a local level, on, on a ground level for us. So, so while, while I think, you know, the point is, I'm not, I'm not going to debate that that's not valid uh, because it is what Commissioner Hampton just said. I, I, I came at this from the approach of ground level. What can we do to address um, specifically what does housing look like? And that's, it's, so, so that's why I chose ADUs and um, manufactured housing and the innovative. Okay. Because I, I think somewhere we need to describe what um, affordable housing can look like. Um, my one and two were the were the ADUs <clears throat> and the streamlining of the permit process. Um, ADUs for me seemed like just a slam dunk to, to add density, you know, within existing um, stock. Um, 
streamlining. That's that's Tom's job, and I, I think he's already working on that. But I think it's you know that's already in process, and anything we can do to make that a bigger priority, I think is is good. Uh, transfer and development was my third, and I um, you know that's something that hopefully we can. It seems like that's going to take a little bit longer to get that kicked into gear, but um, I think it's really critical as well. Um, I liked Commissioner Hampton's co uh, comments on the, the condo issue. Um, it seems like a pretty big monster. Um, do you know, Arthur, are there any are there any groups, or lobby groups, or anything that are trying to address this at a state level that we could partner it, with or support? I know conversations are occurring. And in fact, an East King County legislator is trying to help facilitate those conversations. Or I'm sure there's others too, but there is one East King County legislator who is trying to bring all parties together and trying to work through stuff. So it is getting attention. It sounds like it's getting attention. So are, are is there, there anything that local well, agencies, I, cities can do to support that effort I, besides? I, I think in general, or? for the legislators, the more they see and hear people and reasons why it's an issue that helps them to take it look at it harder so is I that think, i guess I'd, i right. i guess i'd ask the commission is that something that we would be willing to do write a letter or some kind of support to that i mean i guess if, if all of us are in favor of that could could uh, someone I, i'm not aware of the issue so if someone could i would put at the last meeting what's that just in the issue has been expressed by the building community is because of the state's warranty provisions um, that builders have a really difficult time building condominiums because of the threat of lawsuit from the way the laws are written in this state. Mm -hmm. So supposedly somewhat different than other states. And so for the more middle and lower end condominiums, that cost and challenge is too great. Um, so you still see some high end condos built because they can build all that in. But that's what we're hearing is the issue, in general, the issue. Okay. And so that's preventing them from building um, in a market where, as Commissioner Hampton said, there seems to be potential built up demand. To address Commissioner Cecil's question, I think it's something that if, if we felt that it was an important part of this plan and council felt the same way, that council through their legislative agenda could advocate for this, and we have two state reps and a, and a state senator that are always listening to the concerns of, uh, of the people in Bothell. Right. So I, I don't think, I mean, I think it is a big, a big challenge, but it's a conversation that's eventually gonna have to happen if we want condos to come online. And uh, I wanna also back up his point on TOD. I think that that was my number two. And uh, if we're gonna go down the list, my, my three was, was tough, it was about regulate regulatory and trying to reduce the uh, the red tape and you know I support Tom and I think he's doing a great job but I also uh, you know considered what what Commissioner Zorn said about innovative housing types so this was the hardest category for me okay. so that's implying that's all help us in figuring out how to what we're to spend time and energy helping you you know that this is an area we should talk a lot about at the next meeting did, did, oh, sorry. Did B nine? Did did you did you mention B nine at all, or was that no? Was that on the B nine got uh, two votes, yeah, uh, two two votes uh, a number two and a number three, so three points. Okay, got it. Okay. My top two fell in line with uh, Commissioner Cecil and Commissioner Hampton. So the transit oriented development. Um, I think we've stressed that in many meetings and heard from the public that that's really high as a priority. Uh, second item being the B6, uh, could talk about the clustering provisions, which we all believe will have a big impact on development moving forward. And I guess uh, my choices kind of fell in line, I think, with Commissioner Zorn's, uh, because I know we're talking about an overall housing strategy here. Um, one of my, uh, my I guess biggest concerns is the affordability factor, and the market it really hasn't developed any type of affordable housing by itself. And I feel like a lot of these, um, I feel like the ones with the manufactured housing, cottages, carriage houses, and ADUs uh, are, are, are uh, I think, exciting uses of uh, keeping people in single family units, but I, on a smaller scale, not necessarily having to build something really large. And it, it gives us an opportunity to make some very quick changes to uh, a short housing supply. 
that kind of fits in with the uh, that fits in with the um, the historical <coughs> uh, I guess residency of Bothell. Okay. We move to the next. Yeah. So C is really the votes are really scattered. Yeah. <laughs> So C2, C2, well, that's <laughs> C5, and C11 have three votes each. Can you repeat that one time, Mike? C2, C5, and C11. Also C3. I must have missed one. Three votes. C3, or I, sorry, C4 had two votes. And then many others tied with one. Sure. C1, C7, C8, C10. C12, C13, C15, and <laughs> C18. This may be one where an extra vote will provide some clarity. Did, did you say 11? 11 had the most votes, so okay. three. And is that three votes or three individuals that voted for three it? Points. Three points? Three individual votes. Okay, thanks. almost asked the question, how is this one that you talk through it all together and then do some type of almost revote? You know, let people make all their comment. This might be one where everybody gets to sort of talk through their perspectives and stuff. Next meeting or tonight? Yeah, next meeting. Like the, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, tonight. <laughs> um, so this might be one that, given how broad the initial reaction is, um, right? But again, what will maybe be helpful here is that um, by <coughs> showing this, and the public will also see that your initial re is this is one that's sort of hard to sort of hone in on that you might that might help attract comment to help you sort through that as well, kind of some more. But I'd almost this one feels like. This one might just need, let's go round robin and let everyone talk it through more and then maybe just revote it again. Yeah, and I, I didn't look through, uh, I mean, I looked through them all, but I, I didn't spend time on consolidation. I don't know if there's, um, there's 22 points on it. I don't know if there's a way to, there's, it right. seems like there's wiggle room here to be able to pare okay. that down a little bit and then maybe it make make more sense and give us an extra vote. Okay. Yeah, I think partially why it's difficult is because market um, prices are so far away from affordable levels that a lot of these mechanisms, you know, may not get us to where we want to be. So, I guess my top two choices were C three and C five. Um, to me, it makes the most sense if you're looking at an up zone that we can slide some affordability factor into that development either through you know, duplex or just a percentage like we've discussed in previous meetings. And then C5 on, as far as preservation, um, trying to maintain what mm -hmm. stock we have. D two things. Might we ex be able to expand this to four, because it's such a huge category. Could right. we expand this or, right. I mean, could, because it's a challenge yeah. to just come up with mm -hmm. three. And then the other thing is um, I noticed uh, reviewing some of the testimony that we had in some of our roundtables, mm -hmm. uh, a couple places and a couple different instances, uh, it was mentioned and it resonates with me as well. The city of Vancouver has put a moratorium on home purchases that, uh, for out of uh, international home purchases then on there. They've put a tax on them. Or a tax, a right. I'm sorry, a tax. Right. Right, right, that's mm -hmm. right. So 
I would love in a separate letter, I don't know if we can do a tax on a city level or if we could do a tax or if we could approach it at, in Olympia, a mm -hmm. tax on a, a similar way of managing mm -hmm. to, to, to kind of bring down this mad bidding, bidding right. war that's been going on and making housing less affordable for people who are trying to live here. We will, that's coming up in enough of these conversations, like every one of them, <laughs> that we'll try to do some research on what are the constraints to that conversation, if any. Because it's every group that we're in, the, in our fifth group, and every group has brought this question, issue up. It must be incredibly hard to monitor or enforce. I, that's what I'm saying. I, Vancouver is doing it somehow, and what we hear from everyone, so now they're all coming down here to buy. I don't know how true that is or not. Um, I'm hearing it from realtors to some degree. I, who knows if that's hearsay or true, and even if it is true, is our laws, is a different country, um, what are the constraints? Because I, I have to believe that somewhere in this state, people are asking this question enough that there's at least some parameters that the conversation can be had. You yeah, know. thanks for bringing that back to us too. I, I just wonder how Vancouver is combating the problem because you could, you know, get a single member LLC and you don't know who the owners are to buy a house. There's just yeah. a multitude of ways right. to, to enforce that as a city. I don't know how right. um, unless you expose ownership of all mm -hmm. entities. So and and that's right. And that's a good element of that. Um, it. The reason why I think it's worth checking into is because not only when you hear that the result of what Canada, what Vancouver has done is, movie is money is moving down here implies somehow, it, is that true or not? Uh, has, it, has it had an impact in Vancouver? That's part of the answer. You know, question is, do they know? Can they demonstrate that there's been an impact from it anyway and, and stuff? So that's why I'm saying there's just so much conversation around this topic. I feel like it's worth us getting some information to put on the table for people to be to understand. And I think it's a little bit, how true is it that it's had an impact in Vancouver? And the second is, even if you wanted to have the conversation, what, is, what are the things that are in this state um, legally, what issues are out there? And where you go from there, I have no idea. But it's, we're just hearing, I'm hearing it everywhere the last six months. Everybody's asking this question. And it might just be finger pointing that one group to, cause all the blame and they're really not to be. It's lots of other things going on, but I'm hearing it enough. Okay, so I'm hearing, so the idea of talking this around the table more at the next meeting and yeah. then doing a revote and thinking about allowing four votes on this one? Yeah, and I, I just want to express, I uh, was also kind of in line with uh, Commissioner Cabe with regards to his comments, I don't need to say them again, but with regards to home preservation, but I've already said that once before tonight, but I just feel like, you know, mm -hmm. they're already there, it's the affordable homes are already built, so. Okay. And if I could add, I think it's C11, sorry, I'm not on the right page, for the, uh, the, the tax exemption for the multifamily. That was uh, something that many of the panelists mm -hmm. said is already working and it's something that we should uh, consider paying close attention to. And another comment, I didn't put this on my sticky note, but after we had talked about the clarification on C4, I, I, I would move that up a rank and uh, add that to the conversation. Okay. I know it was below the other vote getters at two instead of three, so I wanted to make that comment. <laughs> Section D. Uh, not a big consensus on Section D either, but the top vote getter was D2, which had five votes. And, and three of those were spread among uh, individual bullets under D2. Correct. Next was D6, which had four votes. And high ranking, so it had nine points. Yeah. And D7, which had three votes. Uh, 
uh, D9, D11, and D13 had two votes each. And D1, D8, and D12 also ran. They had one vote each. D1, D8, D12. I don't know if you can change votes, but I, I didn't notice that D1 had been done, so I would have had D6. So to scratch a, a D1 and add a D6 is where I would have gone. Well, that's a perfect uh, lead into my first comment I was going to make while train of thought. Um, I was fortunate enough to, I think I attended every one of the community greets we've, uh, conversations we've had, and they've been very valuable. <coughs> the most recent one at the senior housing, um, there was at least one person. I know there's some conversation about aging in place and how good it is for not only the individual, but just when somebody has to move, just uh, there's depression that might go along with it. There's familiarity, there's family, there's all kinds of things. And it's not just about keeping somebody in their home, maybe because there's all a lot of other different, a lot of other positive factors about keeping people in their house. Uh, it is um, it is a tough, uh, tough issue to deal with, but I'm glad that a lot of people here are supporting that. Arthur, I thought your point about the um, baby boomers and pensions sort of going away, that one kind of struck a chord with me prior to voting. So the low income senior population just seems like the saving strategies by our different generations are going to make that an issue. So that was D7. Mm -hmm. So I identified two of the subsections in D2, and, uh, and I did not identify D6. And the reason that I did this is, is I think that we need more types of housing for seniors that they're comfortable aging in. And when I think of aging in place, I think about aging in the community that you live in, not necessarily in your home. There's a lot of single family homes in this city that have one or two people in them. And I don't think that that's, I mean, well, they have the right to be there and it's their home. I don't think it's necessarily the best use of a four bedroom house. And so if we can create housing that people can transition to and feel good about it so they don't have that, that kind of dramatic move, then I think that there's value in that. And then we can turn over that housing stock for a younger family that's growing and we won't have to build more houses and cut down more trees. So that's, that's why I did that. I chose the uh, first bullet and the, uh, looks like the sixth bullet to recognize different and emerging types of senior housing. And of course, that would have to be a, a conversation with the senior community to find out what they'd be in favor of. But I wanted to share my thoughts on that. Okay. I mean, might, might be a happy medium then with regards to ADUs and the current home, because I, I feel like it's not just necessarily the home of the person, it's it's the yard, it's the plants they put there, their memories of their kids, you know. I mean, it's just like all kinds of things to go through their mind, that's kind of, you know, uh, it's important to them. So I don't know, trying to keep them in the same small geographic area, but I, but I appreciate your point about, you know, limited housing stock, for sure, so. Okay. So we have one other, bigger picture question for you in the process, and that is outreach. So you've had the panel. We've done now four focus groups, and we're still working on one or two others from the uh, schools and the business group. And just on that note, I know it hasn't been, but can we, yep. be know, can we know in advance for, more in advance for some of the other commissioners? Right. Who's Maybe yes, schedules uh, yes. No, uh, yes. Senior one, we were working with someone, and they said, "Oh, it works in two days." <laughs> okay. Yeah, exactly. No, no. I, yeah, exactly. So yes, we will try to be more conscious of that. Um, but the other thing that um, we've been exploring some, and we haven't gotten it done yet, and the question is, how much added value would it be for you? Is a more online 
survey available to the whole community. And if that's something, if we're sort of getting close to what we think we might be able to do, we haven't. Um, but is that something that we should try to do that can affect some of our timing for completing because we have to get it out there and have it be up for a while and then tally the results and stuff, so. Who would be creating the survey? We have drafted, we have pretty much kind of something drafted. We could share it with you to see the kind of questions we thought. I mean, the challenge was keep it short and sweet. Right. Um, and so we tried to find um, something that try to so we could share with you email out the draft that we've been working on with city staff so you can see the kind of questions we've I, come up with and I'm torn between I think the community would love to be involved I'm just torn with how much are we asking this, the staff to create yet one more thing for us to digest so if if the staff can take it on You've been really good at formulating questions. I don't think they need to go through my eyes, per se. Um, I think the survey is ready to go. It's just it's a matter of getting it getting out there and then tabulating it. So we're we're just going to have to um, make an assessment uh, in the next uh, probably the next week or so about whether we can we can pull that off. And how how was that done? Like uh, through alerts? I know there's all types of things with our new website. Like how would the, the email, the survey go out? What, what, how well, would people know about it? It would go to email to the folks on our contact list. Uh, and but I think it would mostly be through the website and through our Facebook page. Okay. How long would you <coughs> anticipate it being open? Like a couple at weeks this or a month? Point, or? Yeah, a couple of weeks at the yeah. most. Yeah. Okay. I, I mean, my take is if, if you've already pretty much got it done, I think the more information, the better. I agree. I, I, I know this is kind of an old school way to go about it, but um, I don't know if there's a way to work with the uh, Bothell reporter to have a little kind of blurb in there for somebody who may not uh, go to the website very often. Especially maybe a, a large part of the senior community maybe does, it's not as active on the online. Are you looking for us to bless this? I think it's a good idea. Just looking for input. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think we're all, yep, okay. we're all nodding our heads. Okay. Yeah. And I don't think you need to run it by us. Is that uh, rather okay. than, I think you just. Okay. Yep. Okay. Are you done on your end, Arthur? Um. Sure. <laughs> I mean, we're, I mean, yeah, we got through a lot here tonight, so I appreciate okay. that. And I think we have thoughts on how the follow-up will happen, and we'll write up all this. And sounds like B and C will be, C is the hardest, and it's spread out, but um, we'll just sort of write everything up. And the goal will be at the next meeting is a chance to think through some of the sections, but then bring it together, and we'll try to find a way to visually make it easy for you to tally and see what happens when you start. So maybe we'll try to have something more on the wall where you can sort of hand write in when you compare the ones that are shaded so far. You know, how do you then sort amongst the whole bigger list down to a top priority amongst those? So there's sort of there's two kind of levels we're trying to get to is a good pool and then from the good pool, what ones get elevated to the most important, okay? And so then that gives you sort of two tiers there the third tier becomes the ones that are left over, you know, nothing, the final matrix, things don't drop away. It becomes more of a matter of most important, next most important, and other issues that, you know, we'll look at again in the future maybe, but are a top priority for now. And I think the way we're seeing this work its way through is this list we're sort of coming up with now sort of becomes that middle tier and then which ones then elevate to the top. And so the goal is by the next meeting, start to have a you know, pretty good feel for what is in that general pool, the pool from this first round, and then which ones might elevate up to the top. 
Okay. And mm -hmm. when you do that, just something to think about since you now have, you'll get the tally results and thinking ahead and knowing that that's what we we'll want to be doing. One of the things I always tell a jurisdiction is if all your top priority ones don't address only sort of all focus in one area, that's probably not a no good overall strategy. Okay. That you probably have market needs, you have diversity needs, you have affordability needs that hopefully when you see all the things that race to the top, you've got a range of housing goals and policies that you've got strategies. You may not get to all of them, you know, but you're covering a range of them and it's not all just focused in one area, which I think from what you're doing so far, there's a chance of, you know, that seems likely that will happen, but just keep that in mind. That's one of the truth tests I always do at the end. Okay, great. Well, thanks, Arthur, Mike. Um, so with that, we'll just bring close to the, that part of the study session and, uh, old business, um, no old business. Oh, and I guess I should also say that the, the next meeting for this, the housing strategy be on the 28th later this month, right? Is that correct? Yes. And that will be a public hearing. So, so we will be officially closing the study session at this point. Okay. Uh, no, June, June 7th. Sorry. Oh, sorry, June seventh. That correct. And um, any reports from staff? Yeah, uh, two things uh, on the calendar. You uh, may have noticed uh, this Friday, uh, three thirty to five thirty, uh, the storefront studio from the University of Washington Department of Architecture is having its uh, second open house. Uh, the the uh, designs and concepts that they generated in the, for the first open house are up in the lobby um, and uh, the second open house uh, this Friday and then uh, final open house will be June 2nd. So I encourage you if you're able to stop by and, and uh, check out their uh, work in progress. And one other thing, um, uh, Bruce Blackburn uh, sent along the, um, well, we, we have uh, for the chair's signature, uh, the uh, Planning Commission findings uh, for both the clustering and tree retention code amendments, and uh, Bruce also sent along hard copies of the uh, uh, revised findings uh, for uh, to pass around to the commissioners. Um, there's cop those copies are for everybody, but the chair, the chair has a copy to sign here, so we'll take care of that immediately following the meeting. Great, thanks, Dave. And then I just, I guess I'd just like to say if, if there's other members speak, it's just been a great opportunity to sit down with all the community groups. It's, I'm really glad we're going through this process. I don't know if it's been a very common process to do that in the past, to have, um, uh, to, to have community developments kind of reach out to groups like this, but I really appreciate all the work that you guys have put together because it's, and, and Mike and Arch, to put together all these groups, it's, it's been fantastic. There's a huge need out there for for affordable housing and i know we're talking about a housing strategy plan but there's a lot of people that are just getting by for sure so uh do we have a motion move to adjourn second all those in favor say aye aye we are adjourned <laughs>